Hi there, my name is Ms. Midha, and today we're gonna to be focusing on the following question. How do we ensure there is randomness when choosing a sample? So we're gonna be looking at one specific study today and answering some questions based off of that, really focusing on how we ensure there is randomness when choosing a sample. So here we go. All right, so here is our study. It says, a research group interested in comparing the effect of different types of music on short-term memory gathers 200 volunteers for a study. One group will listen to a hip hop music playlist while trying to memorize a list of 20 words. A second group will listen to a playlist of orchestral music while trying to memorize the list of 20 words. After a break, the number of words recalled correctly by each individual is measured and the results for the two groups are compared. So we're gonna be looking at three different questions. You'll notice two are on the screen right now. The third one will be up after, um, but go ahead and pause the video and think about the answers to these two questions. Is this study an observational study or is it an experimental study? Explain your reasoning. And which group, hip hop music playlist group, orchestral music group, which group do you hypothesize will recall more words? So again, pause the, the video for as long as you need. Think about the answers to these two questions. Once you think you have it, unpause and we will review. Okay, now in order to answer that first question, it's important to review the difference between observational and experimental studies, right? So reminder that observational studies collect data without influencing things directly. Whereas experimental studies collect data by directly influencing something to determine how another thing is changed. So based on that information, if we think about this and we reread the, the study here, we'll notice that this is an experimental study, right? Why is that? Well, the researchers are investigating the effect of type of music on the ability to memorize words, hence an experimental study. Now for the second question, which group do you hypothesize will recall, recall more words? Now, some of you may have said hip hop music. Some of you may have said orchestral. What's really important to note here is that whichever group you hypothesize will recall more words, you explain your reasoning. Really, really important to back up your hypothesis with reasoning. So if you chose hip hop music, if you said that the group listening to a hip hop music playlist will recall more words, a reason for why that might be could have been, well, hip hop usually has a lot of words spoken very quickly, right? So this may help people listen and focus on the words they're memorizing. Whereas orchestral music, well, it makes people tired and unable to concentrate on the words. If you chose the orchestral music playlist, the group listening to the orchestral music, the reasoning for that could be, well, orchestral music, it's more calming, right? It could relax this group to focus more clearly on the words to memorize. And whereas the words in hip hop, it could be distracting while trying to memorize the word list. So again, based on the group that you chose, right? Based on the group that you chose will hypothesize, um, that you hypothesize will recall more words, really important that you back up your hypothesis with reasoning. Okay, now for our third question here. So in this question, we're looking at four different options for splitting the volunteers into groups. We have four different options here. We need to figure out which method will best address the intention of the study. So our first method, our first option is dividing groups based on their preferred music style. Second one says to divide groups based on their age. The youngest hundred listen to hip hop music, the older hundred listen to orchestral music. The third group, it asks us to divide based on the order in which they come in to do the study. So the first hundred listen to hip hop, the next hundred listen to orchestral music. And the fourth method is to write all the volunteer names on slips of paper, put them in a jar and shake it, then draw out a hundred slips. These hundred slips that are drawn out, the first hundred slips that are drawn out, these people will listen to the hip hop playlist, while the others will listen to the orchestral playlist. So once again, pause the video, think about what the answer to this question is. Once you think you have it, once you think you've determined which method will best address the intention of the study, unpause the video and we'll review. Okay, now before we go over what the method, which method is best, um, I think it's really important to just pause for a second and sort of remind ourselves why 
the method for dividing subjects into groups matters, right? So if we think about this, we look at this situation and we really kind of think through it. What are the two variables being studied in this experimental study? Well, it's the type of music and the ability to memorize words, okay? Those are our two variables being studied. So if we look at these choices, these methods, right? We really wanna think about, you know, what variables other than music could influence the results? Again, our two variables are the type of music, the ability to memorize words. So think of other variables, think of variables other than music that could influence the results. And then think about how those variables might accidentally show up in the different groups. That'll help you figure out which of these four methods actually do best address the intention of the study. And it turns out the answer to this question, which method is in fact the best method, is the fourth one. Writing all the volunteer names on slips of paper, putting them in a jar and shaking it, and then drawing out a hundred slips. Those hundred slips, those people will listen to the hip hop playlist while the others listen to the orchestral music. Okay, now why is this the best choice? Well, in order to figure out why this one's the best choice, it's good to look at why the other three are not the best choice, right? Why the first three methods are not the best way to divide people for the study. So if I look at the first one, I'm just gonna focus on the first one right now. Divide groups based on their preferred music style. Okay, why isn't this the best way? Well, the first method, this method, it may have additional variables that come into play, right? For example, the study may then be testing whether listening to your preferred music is helpful or not, rather than the type of music itself. So that means our first method is out. Okay, what about the second method, dividing groups based on their age? Okay, well, this, this adds an issue with age, right? For example, younger people may be able to better memorize words than older people. So the results, it would not be due entirely to the type of music. So our second method is not the best way. Okay, now what about the third one? The third one is saying to divide the groups based on the order in which they come in. Now this one may seem like a way to divide people that doesn't introduce other variables, but the variables could be hidden. For example, a group of people who are very good at memorizing words, they may all come in at once and be put into the same group. So our third method is out. Okay, so why is the last method the best choice for this study? Well, it's because all of the other options introduce the possibility that the results will not actually measure the variables intended to be measured in the study, right? By assigning the two groups using random selection. This is random selection because all the names are being put in a jar, shaken up and then taken out, right? A hundred names are randomly taken out. So by assigning the two groups using random selection, any difference between the groups, it happens by chance rather than by design. And so this, this idea of random selection, right, which we can see through that fourth method, this is actually the best way we can do experimental studies, right? This is often the best method we can use for experimental studies. Okay, so to summarize, experimental studies they collect data by directly influencing something to determine how another thing has changed. And that is what is happening here in this study. And if we're really trying to figure out the best option for splitting the volunteers into groups, we'll note that the fourth method that's on the screen right now is in fact the best method because you're assigning these groups using random selection.